A warm welcome to Disky Talk with Luyolo. If you're tuning in for the very first time, I ask that you please do subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you've been a part of this journey, I hope you thoroughly enjoy this episode. So, on today's episode, we discuss all things Bafana Bafana announcement, Mamelodi Sundowns, and have a look at the players which have been left out, specifically Mamelodi Sundowns players, as I have a notion, but that is something that we're going to go into a lot further on into the episode. So, we will then start with the first segment. The first segment of today's episode is Bafana Bafana announcement. So, Hugo Bruce has made his 34-man announcement, which then will be trimmed down to 23. But from the 34 that he's called up, uh, I'd like to go through a couple of players and uh, have a look at them and then go into detail with regards to what do I make of Hugo Bruce and um, his vision going forward, especially considering the players that he's trying to integrate within the national team. So of the 34, um, we'll start with the goalkeepers. So with the goalkeepers, we've got Ronan Williams from Supersport United. You've got Veli Montwa from Amazulu, Bruce from Kaiser Chiefs, Mlungwane from Golden Arrow. So those are the four goalkeepers, which is very interesting then because um, if you consider how things played out the last time with regards to Mlungwane and how he ended up getting dropped because of... Um, uh, the weight issue, according to Hugo Bruce. It's quite interesting then because, I mean, over the past month, how much, how much of that issue, according to him, would um, Lungwane have dealt with, you know? Because when I look at Lungwane and I look at his body structure, and I mean, guys, we watch DSTV Premiership. We all know Lungwane. That's his body structure. And he's been performing with that very same body, you know? And he's had some great man of the match displays, you know, in the past... Um, couple of uh, months and he's played really really well for golden arrows with that body weight so it's very interesting then to see what happens this time around and um, if he does leave him out because i'd like to think that one goalkeeper will be left out but if we have to be objective and from a consistency perspective i think this time around um, bruce would be left out because um, yeah in the past couple of weeks he hasn't been playing for kaiser chiefs whereas uh, Swissom nuane plays week in week out for this golden arrow side so yeah those are the goalkeepers so i think bruce will be left behind there and then let's head on to the defenders then with the defenders, we've got uh, Mobi from Sekukune United. We've got Tapelo Murena, Mamelodi Sundowns. We've got Jabulo Blom from Kaiser Chiefs. We've got Masheko from Cape Town City. Klanti from Kaiser Chiefs. Uh, Vusi Sibia from Baroka. Rushin Duruk from Mamelodi Sundowns. Kulu from Tel Aviv. We've got Tivang Pete from... Um, he plays his trade in Portugal. Uh, we've got Njabulo Ngobo, Kaiser Chiefs, Musa Lebusa, Mamelodi Sundowns, Luke Fleur, Supersport, and Malepe from Amazulu. So with regards to that then, um, the first notable name to mention is uh, Terence Masheho, you know, especially considering that how well he's been doing this season and how um, he started life to DSTV Premiership during this season, you know. He's a player that I felt deserved uh, a call-up into the national team, especially considering the fact that the last time we played Nigo Mobi in that left-back position, you know, a right-footed left-back, where... Whereas we have a player like Mashiko in the country who is well adept at playing in vertical zone one and is a very, very good um, left-sided fullback. So it's going to be interesting then to see if what happens with him. But I think this is a player who should be thoroughly in the national team, you know. And um, then you look at Sviso Slanti, also another very interesting one, you know, because um, one then mentions um, the issue of Lila K, you know. If we're talking age, I mean, Lila K is younger than uh, Sviso Slanti, but Sviso Slanti gets the call-up. And if we have to be objective and have a look at the performances in the past couple of months, if you go Lila K versus Sviso Slanti, 
who deserves the call up you know my opinion it should be lila k you know so very interesting then but when i have a look at some of the players and have a look at the defenders you know i just think that um yeah certain players nice for them to get that uh provisional call up but i mean you 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 have a look at um uh tibang peter you have a look at um sibia from baroka luke fleurs Malepe. These are just a couple of players who I think they're doing well for themselves. But going forward, I don't think they make the 23-man squad. So moving on then into midfield, you know, we've got Tabani Zuke from Golden Arrows and Tobin Vala, Sundowns. We've got Sitole, Portugal. Um, we've got Yusuf Mart, Sikokune. You've got Debo Homukwena, Goodman Musele, Ethan Brooks and Jesse Don. Also then, very interesting. The biggest question, yes, of course, when it comes to the midfielders is, where is Rivaldo Kutsia? You know, I, I just think that is a player that has to be in this national team. However, when we look at that, I think um, going forward, I think Tabani Zuge, uh, Jesse Don, um, and Sitole, I think, and Goodman Musele, those are the players who could possibly drop out. But Musele actually has a good chance of actually forming part and parcel of that 23-man squad. So um, just to add context, this episode is um, recorded before that 23-man squad announcement has been made. So yeah, so those are the players who I think will fall out, you know, not to say they're doing badly, but in relation to the competition they face within the midfield, I just don't see them um, staying within the 23-man squad going forward. However, great for them to get the 34-man uh, provisional call-up. You know, it just shows that they're doing really well at their club sides. And then the forwards, we've got Tabiso Kutumelo. Kutumela, sorry. We've got uh, Shongwane from Maritzburg United. We've got Mahopa. We've got Victor Litsualo. We've got Luther Singh. We've got Percy Tau. We've got Vincent Pule. We've got Mtanzani and uh, Tsekhofato. Mabasa. So two names there that, that, that stick out to me, you know. Firstly being um, Duduzim Tanzani, you know. Um, very happy that he's gotten the call up, you know, especially considering how well he's been doing for Cape Town City. You know, that is, that is that, you know, for any player who's doing well, you know, within the DSTV Premiership and they show great signs of uh, consistency, they're scoring goals, they're assisting and they're leading their team you know, with regards to how players instituted at their respective football club, you know, any, any one of those players to get a call up, you know, it's always, it's always a very good thing for them. It bodes well for their confidence and for their teams as well, you know, because it now means that you have an international on your book. So happy from, for Ntutuzim Tanzani. I've always believed that he should be a part and parcel of this national team. And then the player that I'm most excited about is Mabasa. You know, especially considering how well he's been doing at Orlando Pirates and having a look at how he started Orlando Pirates. I think he's doing absolutely phenomenal, you know. And this is a player who should be Bafana Bafana's number nine when fully fit, you know. I think with Mabasa, it's just about um, working on his fitness and just ensuring that he stays fit, you know. And um, yeah, I, I just think he's a very good player that could be used really, really well within this national team. However then... Let's go into um, the next segment. So the next segment then, um, yeah, basically when we look at Bafana Bafana and uh, we look at Hugo Bruce and the vision and the journey he's embarking upon, you know, first and foremost, I'll start by saying that I acknowledge what he's doing with regards to um, looking to have a much more youthful side and looking to embed the young players, you know. I really, really like that because... It shows a man who's got vision and it shows a man who's got backbone, you know. He's not afraid to leave out certain players. However, this is now my qualm with that, is that sometimes you end up focusing too much on embedding young players. You end up leaving out um, quality, experienced players who can still add so much to this national team. So, what am I talking about? I'm talking about um, when, 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 when you build at a national team. You know, that's also another issue that I have is that national team football, I just don't think you should be building, you know, because we need the best conditioned footballers at national team. And for me, it's not about building and having a vision. National team football is about competing and it's about getting results. So 
that's the qualm that I have when you have too many young players, you know, and you don't have the balance. So for me, it's about striking a balance where you've got the experienced heads who can still offer so much to this national team squad, you know, because if you look at South African footballers from a traditional perspective, traditionally, South African footballers mature like wine, you know. The older they get, the better they get, the more they're able to harness each and every single um, facet and quality within their skill sets, you know. And you're looking at players who hit their peak in their late 20s and early 30s. So because of that, there are still so many players within South Africa that can offer so much to this national team that haven't been called up, maybe by virtue of the fact that they just don't meet the prerequisite of age. Which for me, then, I look at that and think, hmm, it's a bit of a con because it means that you're leaving out some of the best players within the country by virtue of age. But have a look at the performance and have a look at the legs as opposed to the age. So I fully acknowledge and I like what's, what Hugo Bruce is doing. But when we have a look at some players which have been left out, which is the next segment, which is centered around Mamelodi Sundowns, for me, it just then, it's very, very disappointing because these are players who can contribute so much to the national team. So heading on then into the next segment. The next segment is um, all about Mamelodi Sundowns and um, the players that have been left out from Mamelodi Sundowns. So we will start from um, the back and then work it all the way up. So I will then start with Lila Kay, who plays as um, a left back, you know, for Mamelodi Sundowns. And um, this is a player who I don't understand why he's not in the national team. I don't understand at all. Because if you have a look at um, A, his consistency in the past couple of seasons, B, his um, numbers, you know, when you have a look at the goals, you have a look at the assists. I mean, last season in the DSTV Premiership, he played 24 matches, he had five goals, and he had four assists, you know. And if you're looking at that, you're looking at a goal contribution of nine out of 24 games for a left-sided wing back, you know, which is very phenomenal because Lila Kay has the technical ability and... Um, the, the capacity to give you numbers like an attacking midfielder within the DSTV Premiership, which is very rare for um, a wingback, you know, in our country. And what Lila Kay offers you, you know, it's not just um, in open play, but when you have a look at the set pieces, and the reason why I want to mention that is sometimes when you're, you're playing in, in um, these difficult international fixtures, you know, you, you struggle in open play. It happens, you know. And sometimes it's a set piece that can win you the game. And because it is a set piece, you want the best conditioned A and the best um, player who's got the best technical ability from a set piece. And in the country, we're looking at Lila K. I mean, from corners, he's got many assists from corners, you know. From free kicks, he's got many assists, you know. Closer to the box from free kicks. He's got goals as well, you know, when we have a look at vertical zone three. Whenever there is a set piece in vertical zone three for Lila K, he's very good at it, you know. He can hit it from that side. He can hit it from um, just in outside of the box, which is zone 14 in vertical zone three. So this is a player who can do so much and has a complete skill set, you know, and ticks all the boxes from a qualitative perspective, you know. And what he would give this Bafana Bafana side is that he would give them width because when you have a look at um, our national team and you have a look at some of the players within the national team, you know, I just believe that we don't have um, the best wingers when it comes to delivery from vertical zone one. And when you compare some of the wingers with regards to their technical ability and their technical skill set, and you compare that to of a Lila K, Lila K has a better technical skill set than most wingers within South Africa, left-sided wingers, you know. So I would rather then have Lila K, you know, playing as um, a left wing back, because what he would give you then is that he would give you that final ball and that delivery from a qualitative perspective. Whenever he pushes up into vertical zone one and he finds himself either in consolidation phase or in the final third, you know. So that is how highly I rate Lila K and why I think he should be in the national team, because then it would allow us then to have um, 
a left-sided attacking player, you know, to push a lot um, further forward and um, occupy um, the left half space, which is vertical zone two, and focus a lot more on goal scoring, you know. So that could allow you then to have uh, a Kutumela as opposed to an out-and-out -out winger because Lila K can always occupy um, vertical zone one very well, you know, and that would bode well for the national team because I think the more... Um, goal orientated and goal minded players that you have within the national team the better for us because then that gives us a chance with regards to creating goals and scoring those goals so let's move on then and head on into the next player the next player is Rivaldo Kutsia you know who um, who plays as um, a deep laying playmaker you know and when we have a look at Rivaldo Kutsia so personally um I think his best position is as a centre-back, you know, naturally so. However, the way in which he's transitioned, the way in which he's developed as a footballer into this role as a six, you know, it's been, it's been lovely to see, you know. And um, what's also interesting is that this is not his natural position. But if you have a look across through the league, who matches him from a qualitative perspective? from a technical perspective, from a tactical perspective, and from reading of the game perspective. In my opinion, there's no one. So why is he not then in the national team? Because what Rivaldo Kutia gives you, he gives you such a complete skill set from vertical zone three, because what he can do is, whenever it gets tough and um, uh, you find that we're, we're struggling defensively, he can always drop in naturally as a center back you know, and then he makes it a back three. And when he makes it a back three, you know, he then um, gives us much more tactical defensive organization from that perspective, you know, because of how well he reads the game, you know. That's from a defensive perspective, you know. And then when we look at it from developing the game and in build-up phase, what he does is that he's so comfortable on the ball, you know. His spatial awareness is very good, you know. And um, also how he's also able to read the game. And he finds the right pockets of spaces deep in vertical zone three, you know. And what he's very good at, he's very good at retaining the ball. His passing accuracy is also phenomenal. And this is a player who hardly loses the ball. So what he gives you then in build-up phase, he gives you that assurance that every time he gets onto the ball, he's going to be able to retain it. He's not going to lose it, you know. It's a short thing with Rivaldo Kutsia in build-up phase when he drops in there. And then when the team transitions and it finds itself uh, higher up the pitch, you know, what he then gives you is that he assumes the role of a deep laying playmaker. And he can get onto that ball and he can spray those passes, that 50-yard diagonal, that 40-yard diagonal, you know, and also very good then at breaking the lines in midfield, you know, very good at finding his players within the half spaces. So this is a player then who can progress the ball in consolidation phrase from vertical zone three and very well into vertical zone four, which is the right-sided half space, very good at finding his playmakers as well, you know. So... This player, in my opinion, is a player who should be in the national team. If anything, when we look at his consistency and we look at um, how well he's been doing at Sundowns, he should be one of the first names, actually, within the national team. That's just my opinion. Let's move on then along to um, the next player, you know. The next player is um, Andy Lejali. Yes, granted, he hasn't been a regular at Mamelodi Sundowns, you know, but whenever he does play, he's got very solid performances, you know, and his understanding of the game from a tactical perspective and a technical perspective is superior. So we need a lot more players who are um, high level athletes. And I think that's what Andy Lejali is. And you take uh, Andy Lejali and you pair him up against all the other eights within the country and you compare him to the other eights in the country and look there's not many who are clear you know I can only think of one at this moment who I think competes with him if not better and that's a table home you know but otherwise throughout the rest of the league who's on Jali's level in my opinion 
you know, I think that it's only him and Tebo Homukwena from that perspective. Yet again, that's just my that, that's just my opinion, you know. And also, he brings a wealth of experience. And it's not to say that he should automatically start for the national team, you know. But his experience could bode very well. Coming off the bench, you know, in the last 20 minutes to manage a game for us, especially in um, the World Cup qualifiers, you know, and also going forward, um, the AFCON qualifiers, you know, and uh, when you're playing in Africa, you know. So these are players who who can do so much for Mamelodi Sundowns. And then, let's have a look at a player who I think has been clear in the DSTV Premiership in the past couple of seasons. The best player within this era of the DSTV Premiership and the PSL as well. We're having a look at Temba Zwane. So, I know that Temba Zwane, to a certain degree, hasn't really hit the heights and the expectations that we would have hoped for at national team level. However, the question then becomes that, why then do we leave a Tembazwane, but we don't have a solution to the Tembazwane issue? Do you understand? So we've left Tembazwane out, but which playmaker in the country um, then fills that void? There is none. So it tells me then that Bafana Bafana approach games without a playmaker which then is very bad because when you look at the type of players that we have and we look at the type of country that we are, you know, we've got so much flair and we express ourselves, you know. How is it that then that naturally and intrinsically so we're a country with so many good ball players and playmakers, but we go into the World Cup qualifiers without a playmaker? How is it that we leave out our best player, Temba Zwane? Yes, at times he doesn't... Um, he, he doesn't perform to that expectation, but he hasn't been completely bad. One can't sit there and say that Temba Zwane has been horrible whenever he's been called up for Bafana Fana. Because if you have a look at it statistically, you know, he has contributed at times with goals, has contributed at times with assists as well. So for me, it's just very disappointing not to see the best player within the DSTV Premiership in the past three seasons, not in this national team. It just doesn't make sense to me. It baffles me, you know, especially considering that we haven't found a solution. If we had a solution, if Mbule and Ethan Brooks, for example, were clear of Temba Zwane and they played better football than him, they were more consistent than the DSTV Premiership, they contributed with more goals and assists, fine, I understand if you leave him out. But you leave him out and then there's no solution. You know, we haven't addressed that issue, you know. So for me, Temba Zwane has to be in, the, in, in this um, national team, especially considering the fact that um, what he gives you. And also, when you bring him into this national team, I just believe that you have to play him as a 10. You have to play him in vertical zone 3 where he can orchestrate because that's what he is. He's a choir conductor. Temba Zwane is the whole system. And when you leave out a player who is the whole system, who can pull strings and dictate the tempo of the game, and you're leaving him out, and then you're going into the qualifiers without a playmaker, it says to me that there is no link between our midfield in consolidation phase, and then our final third, which is incision phase, you know. It says to me, we don't have a player who can create, who can dominate in central zone three, in um, the half space, um, vertical zone um, four, in the right-sided half space, vertical zone two, the left-sided half space. So for me, it becomes a problem then, because what happens is that we become overly reliant on a Percy Tao, who I think should be a lot further closer to the box, you know. Um, working his way in, in, in zone 14, in vertical zone 3, working his way in the half space, as opposed to him having to come deep to assume the playmaking role. So for me then, it becomes a huge problem. So let's move on then to the extra time segment. So in the extra time segment, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to um, give you guys my vision and what I would do with Bafana Bafana, you know, and... Um, why I feel that Bafana Bafana should be built around Mamelodi Sundowns players. Yes, I've said it. And what substantiates that is A, Mamelodi Sundowns have the best, conditions play, best conditioned players within the country. B, they've got the most conditioned players in, um, in the country. And they are very consistent, you know. So when we have a look at the spell of um, the past three years and the past three seasons, Mamelodi Sundowns have been the most dominant, the most consistent um, club within the country, you know. So when we have a look at it and how I would build around Mamelodi Sundowns and why I think we should be building around them is because 
from a DSTV premiership perspective, they are clear. So tactically and technically speaking, they are clear within the DSTV premiership. Secondly, their players play consistently in the CAF Champions League, which is in Africa. So they have been getting to the quarterfinals. So when they get to Africa, they thoroughly compete. You know, and um, they also have very, very dominant displays within um, the CAF Champions League at times against certain opposition. So these are players who, A, have the know-how. They know how to win. Even on a day when Mamelodi Sundowns don't particularly play well, but they will pick up the three points. That's experience. That's know-how. You know, and it also boils down to the fact that they are well-suited and well-conditioned to get the three points. You know, and that's what you need because... Sometimes when you play these qualifiers and you play against African opposition, you won't always play well. But the most important thing is getting the result. And that's what these players know how to do very well. Also, when you have a look at their training, you know, with the um, footballing acumen and knowledge that I've developed over the years, I've developed a very good knack and understanding of um, seeing your training sessions while you're playing 11 v 11 match. So whenever DSTV Premiership is playing and you find Orlando Pirates is playing against a super sport, I can tell what types of sessions super sports are having, are having in the training session. I can, have, I can tell what type of training sessions Orlando Pirates have. So when we look at it from a qualitative perspective and you have a look at Mamelodi Sundowns, by virtue of the fact that they institute this beautiful free-flowing positional football, you can tell that the training sessions are high intensity, they are high quality and they emphasize on um, creating chances, overloading certain spaces, playing in tight pockets of spaces and finishing, always finishing uh, a, a pattern of play with an attempt at goal. And that's what you need because then you're looking at players who are well conditioned and who are well clear within the country. And that is why I can substantiate why Mamelodi um, sundowns should be more or less the heart and the foundation of Bafana Bafana. So then, how would I do it? So, I would play a 4-3-3 that transitions into a 3-4-3, you know, very similar to what Mamelodi Sundowns do. And the reason why I do that, because when you look at a national team and when you look at a national team coach, A, he doesn't have time to institute his philosophy thoroughly because you only have a couple of training sessions with these players. And when you get to a country as a coach and you have a look at um, the team which is dominating, you have a look at the players who are consistent, we're talking about Mamelodi Sundowns here, you know, and when you build upon the foundation which has already been set at club level by Mamelodi Sundowns, I think it makes your job a lot easier as the coach. And yes, guys, I know people are going to feel like, Ish, but Luolo, we can't have a national team which just has predominantly Sundowns players. I say yes, we can. And the reason why I say we can is because that's the reflection of South African football in the past five years. It's Mamelodi Sundowns. And when you look at the individual awards, you look at the Man of the Match awards, you look at the nominations, it's been Mamelodi Sundowns. So my question then to you guys is, why would you not want to have, A, the most conditioned players, the best trained players, and the most... Con consistent players, you know, why wouldn't you want to have them within the national team? Also, I hate to compare, but the truth is, when you have a look at um, this Sundown side and how it's dominating South African football now, they are the best suited players to actually go compete for us from a Bafana Bafana perspective, you know. So, I'll make an example, and I hate making this example because it's a bit far-fetched with regards to nationality, but when we have a look at the Spanish national team, when they were dominating those years, which players within that national team were um, the best players in that period? Those players were players who were coming from Barcelona. So the Spanish national team was built on the foundation which Barcelona had already laid and set. And that's what I think we should be doing within Bafana Bafana. Building upon the foundation which has already been set on that Mamelodi Sundowns structure and team. So, this is how I would do it then. In goals, I'd have Ronan Williams because I think he's been the best um, um, South African goalkeeper within the DSTV Premiership within the past couple of seasons. So, Ronan Williams would start in goals. And my back four, at right back, I'd have uh, Tapelo Morena, who I think has been very clear in that position, you know. And when you look at the partnership that 
Roshin Duruk and Musa Lebusa are starting to form at club level. It's a partnership that is second to none within the DSTV Premiership. How many other centre-back pairings are keeping the amount of clean sheets they are keeping? How many other centre-back pairings are performing consistently like they do? How many other centre-back pairings are able to develop play and advance the ball well into consolidation phase how they do, who are comfortable, who have a natural understanding? Intrinsically so, you know, it's almost as if these guys are joined at the hip. They understand each other and they read the game very well. When you take that partnership and you institute it at national team level, you've got a solid 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 spine already and then at left back I go with Lila K so already we're looking at a back four of Mamelodi Sundowns right let's have a look at it objectively club affiliations to the side emotions aside which back four within the league is a lot better than these guys or who could dethrone these guys objectively statistically as well I don't see any so I think this back four should be the back four of Bafana Bafana. Yes, there's um, a guy like Njabulo Ngobo who's a very good centre-half, but we're being objective now. He hasn't really found his feet yet at Kaiser Chiefs and he's not playing consistently. So, let's go with the consistent players. That would be my back four. And then, uh, as, the, as the number six, we'd have Rivaldo Kutsia. And then, as... Um, as... Uh, the, the um, number eight, I would have Tebo uh, Homkwena. So sometimes he would come in along and it'd be a double pivot. So it would be a hybrid system, you know, a 4 3 3, at times 4 2 3 1, but mostly 4 3 3. Uh, you've got Tebo Homkwena there. And then as my number 10, I would have Tembazwane. So that's what I'd be looking to do in midfield. And I think this is possibly the best midfield three that we could have, you know, within this country. And uh, I think that could compete as well. And a very balanced midfield three because in Rivaldo Kutsia, we address the defensive um, situation from a build-up phase perspective, you know, and also working the ball into consolidation phase. In Tebojo Mukwena, we've got uh, a player who's complete with regards to going box to box, you know, and he can also give you um, those long-range strikes which turn into goals. In Tembazwane, we've got a player who's well adept in playing in the final third, who starts in consolidation phase deep and works his way up, you know, very manipulative with the ball in both the half spaces and vertical zone three. So you're looking at three players from a central perspective who are specialists. Tembazwane, in that phase, in um, the final third, he's a specialist. Tebojo Mukwena, consolidation phase, is a specialist. Rivaldo Kutsia, build-up phase, he's a specialist. And that's what makes this midfield three so complete. That's what I would be looking to do. And then, as uh, my striker, I would go with Mabasa. I think he's doing really well. I think that's a player who should be playing uh, for Bafana Bafana when fully fit. And then uh, Percy Tau coming off the right side, you know, as an inverted winger. And then off the left side, this is where then I say you can give a young player a chance and integrate him. So I would integrate a strong one. I think he did very well against Ghana coming off the left side and always looking to come in. So when you have a look at him then, I think then um, he's naturally a striker. But this then goes to how I would play. So it transitions then into uh, a 3-4-3, three, three, which then bodes very well for a strong one and a Percy Tau to join Mabasa up front and then allow us to have more penetrative players in the final third who are goal orientated and who are goal scorers as well. So what would then happen is, this is how would it transition into a 3-4-3. Three, three. Um, you've got uh, Pesitao who would go into um, vertical zone um, four in the right side at half space as an inverted winger. You've got Shongwane who would come in. He could even tuck in as far as zone 14 but he would start off in that half space. You've got Lila K who goes. You've got Murena who gives you the width on the side. He goes. And then you've got uh, Temba Zwane. You've got Mukwena. You've got Rivaldo Kutsia. You've got Rushin De Rook. And then you've got Musa Lebusa. Now, the beautiful thing about this system is that this is what Sundowns Institute on a daily basis, a training and on a weekly basis within the DSTV Premiership. So it then becomes a natural um, progression into Bafana Bafana because then what this does is that we're able to overload the midfield 
but still keep the width with the two wing backs and still also have um, the, the, the numerical advantage in areas that count. So that's vertical zone three and uh, vertical zone four and vertical zone two. So in the two half spaces, numerical advantage, vertical zone three, numerical advantage, you know. So this is how I would build Bafana Bafana on the very same foundation which Sundowns have laid at club level. It's a beautiful system, it's a beautiful structure which predicates for consistency, we've seen that, which predicates for consist which predicates for competitiveness and which predicates for them to do well against African opposition in CAF Champions League. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is my vision of Bafana Bafana and what I would do. I thoroughly acknowledge what Hugo Bruce is doing and what he's bringing to the Bafana Bafana side because I think that um, he's clear with his vision and he's got a backbone. However, I just feel that we can't leave out some of our best players who are thoroughly experienced, who compete uh, in CAF Champions League and who are clear within the DSTV Premiership out because we're trying to embed fresher blood. If the younger blood and the fresher um, players are much better suited and are better than the experienced players, bring them in. But if we don't have players who are better than those experienced players who are doing well week in, week out, then I'm sorry, we have to have the best players in the national team because we can't always be building. At some point, you need to start focus on winning. You know, at some point, you need to give us an end result, you know, and I just think we need the best conditioned players and the best suited players tactically and technically. And I think at this present moment, this is the best 11 players that we have in this country. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in to yet another special episode of Disky Talk with Luyolo. Signing out.